Tuesday, June 30th. I believe we're approaching Pinchot Pass, and once again, we're not entirely sure where that is. Uh, it seems like it's most likely either there, or which we actually think it is, is over there. Yep, it's odd. In California, we can't seem to ever determine where the pass actually is. We always think it's someplace and then they always take it someplace else. Whereas in Montana, I don't know, it seems like we're generally right. We can generally tell where we're going, but I don't know if it's just California's just weird or the people who make these trails just take weird paths or what, but so far we've never once accurately predicted where a pass would be. widest rivers we've had to cross so far. Luckily there's been logs. There's a lot of comments about people who said they had to wait it. Up ahead is Mathers Pass. I'm guessing it's somewhere up there. Here we are coming up on Mathers Pass. It's right there. We're gonna go this way a bit, curve along, and then switch back up over the top right there at the saddle. Here we are climbing Mathers pa Pass. You can see our trail way down there by the ponds. Followed it along. It went Along that hillside, I don't know if you can see it. And since then, we've been switchbacking up. Got a couple more switchbacks to the pass right there. We are on Mathers Pass, I believe that that's what it's called. Uh, so far, we think it might have been the easiest pass to climb. The view is pretty nice. Uh, definitely, I'd say better than Pinchot. Not sure if I would say it's better than Glen or Forrester, though. Although I do definitely like the view. Jerick is setting us up for a photo, I think. Yep. Looking back at Mathers Pass, we've come quite a ways. We still have a lot more elevation to drop and miles to do. From the top of the pass, we had about 10 miles and almost 4,500 elevation we were going to drop. Not really sure how far we've gone, but it looks like we've gone. Oh, it is. There's these very pretty lakes down here. It's Tuesday, June 30th, and this is our camp. Here's where we have a little fire ring and where we cooked our dinner and we left our bear canisters. And then there's Dakota's tent. And then just back there is my tent. But we have this cool little stream right by our camp. It is so clear. The water is so clear. You can see all the rocks and the sand at the bottom. Not too many mosquitoes either for how close we are to the river. We're probably closer than we should technically be camping, but this was a marked camp on our app. And we figured it was better to camp where people have already established a campground than to go and make our own new one. Wednesday, July 1st. Uh, so today we might be planning on trying to do our longest day yet. Possibly closer to like 30 miles or something. Uh, the reason we want to do that, although we don't know if we will do that yet or not, but uh, the more miles we do today, the closer we will be to the Vermilion Valley Resort, which is where we plan to resupply tomorrow. And 
we kind of want to get there at a certain time because there's a ferry that will help us make the distance. So when we, there's two turnoffs to Vermilion Valley Resort. There's the first one we could take, which would end up having us do like a five mile hike of non-PCT miles, which isn't terrible, but isn't ideal. If we can make it to the second turnoff, however, there's a ferry that'll bring us across the lake straight to the resort, so that'd probably be better, but the ferry only runs twice a day, so we have to try and be there at a specific time. So, yeah, the more miles we do today, the more likely it is we'll be able to catch the ferry tomorrow. Uh, as far as what else is today, I think we're going to do Muir Pass, but I think that's the only pass we'll be doing today. Uh, the sport vehicles probably aren't going to meet us at Vermilion Valley Resort. Apparently they'd have to take a very long route to get there, probably due to the state and national parks. So it's not really worth the time and gas it would take them to get there. Plus one of the cars needs some repairs, so, which might not be done until Monday. So sounds like they're not going to meet us at the resort. So we'll just have to do our resupply from what's available there, which I don't think should be too much of an issue. snow here than there have been on the other passes, but really not much on the trail so far. Here we are coming up on the summit of Muir Pass, and that little stone hut is called Muir Hut. I think it is just an emergency shelter. It's very cute. back. Here comes Dakota. We'll go in in a second. side. Now let's go check out the hut. Pretty dark, but basically it's a little round room with a bench all the way around. And then a plaque talking about it being the John Muir Memorial Shelter. The Sierras are so pretty. They have so many high mountains and deep blue lakes. Been walking along 
this valley for a while since coming down Muir Pass. We've had a lot of steep towering peaks here to our one side. Way back there where it's very snowy is where we came from. It's Wednesday, July 1st, and here we are at Mission Creek. This is probably the hardest river that we cross in the Sierras, or at least that we know of. It's pretty wide. Uh, when there's snow melt, I guess it can get really deep and be almost a swim. It looks like it's going to be somewhere in between knees and ankle deep for us. We're crossing pretty late in the evening too. It's almost 6. So this could be a bad time to cross uh, if there was snow melting upstream, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad today. Uh, we think, well I mean so far this has been the worst river crossing we have and we think it might be the worst river crossing on the PCT. So hopefully once we get through this we'll never have to do something like this again. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of mosquitoes here. so cold. And apparently the water's just the light. <laughs> oh, I hope it doesn't get above our knees. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Oh! Oh my word, she wasn't kidding about the water temperature. Well, at least the river current isn't too strong. It's getting my pants and brace a little wet, which is kind of obnoxious, but... I guess all in all that could have gone worse. Oh. Yeah, I got wetter than I wanted. I didn't want my leggings wet. That is a waterfall on Mission Creek. It's just a short bit down, maybe five minutes on the trail from where we crossed in the stream. So this would definitely be a dangerous stream to get swept away in if it was at higher water. Thursday, July 2nd. Uh, so we are really close to the Vermilion Valley Reserve or turnoff, so we should be able to get there without any issues tomorrow morning to catch the ferry. And we should be able to sleep in, which is actually sounding really nice. As I said earlier, getting up at six every single day is eh, kind of, I don't know, getting old. Both of us would appreciate to be able to sleep in, and I think we'll be able to get to do that tomorrow, so that'll be nice. Uh, we did hike, I think, 25 or 26-ish miles today. Uh, I believe elevation gain loss was about 6,000 in each direction, so it was a pretty good day. Uh, yep, uh, tomorrow we'll be actually be resupplying at the resort using the, whatever is available at the resort instead of using our resupply vehicles. Uh, the reason for that is it's about a six or six and a half hour drive from where the support vehicles are to the resort. And then they just have to turn around and drive back to where they were. So we're saving them like 13 hours worth of driving or something if we just resupply from the resort. And I don't know, sounds like, I don't know, just that change of experience sounds good. You know, try resupplying how most PCT people resupply sounds interesting. And maybe they'll have a different, I don't know, variety of food. I mean. Currently, I think we have a pretty good variety in our meals, so I don't think we're growing really tired of it or anything, but I don't know, adding in some extra variety in there might be interesting. So we're not meeting the support vehicles tomorrow, but I don't really think that's gonna be a problem or an issue or anything. Just a new experience, and one that's probably good to get in there before the PCT is over. See what it's like for at least one stop without support vehicles.